Hey gang, welcome back to Joe Daddy's Garage. Today's video, I am going to attempt to put in the headliner in the 68 Mustang known as Jade. If you like videos like this, hit the subscribe button and the bell notification to see more. And don't forget, hit that thumbs up button. Thanks. Well, I'm making progress on Jade. You've seen the videos, I'm putting things together, but I need to get the headliner in the car so that I can put the front and rear glass in and I can put the window channel seals, you know, up in the roof line. And to do that, it's gonna take some effort. Now, I've done this before, but it's been a long time. So I'm gonna go over a few things. I might do things a little differently than other people have done it. I may have some different ideas, but I'm gonna to try to help you when it comes time for you to put your headliner in. So let me discuss some of the stuff that I've already accomplished and what may help you whenever you're putting your headliner in your car. All right, so as you can see, I have all the headliner removed from the car except for the bows. So the most important thing in this process is making sure you have the bows in the right place. So when you take these out, make note, in, in this case, and it should be like this on all of them, the bows have a different color. So the rear one in this case has like a dark blue on it. The next one is white. The next one has red. And the forward one has nothing. You also notice there are two holes where these bows go. That supposedly is to help with a little bit of head clearance. So if you use the aft hole on any of the bows, use it on all of the bows. If you use the forward hole to get a little more height, and I mean a little more height, do it on all of them. Make sure that's consistent. Now, I'm going to leave this insulation that's up there. This is fiberglass. Um, I don't feel like taking it out and messing with it, so that's going to stay. In the back, on this back bow, you'll see these clips. Those clips are pretty important. What they do is they keep that bow from swinging out of shape or moving. So when you are putting this in place, those rods or clips have to hook into that hole in the back and around the bow to hold it from rotating. These bows you can rotate, so like that. You know, to remove them, you can rotate it down. And of course, I'll have to worry about this insulation as I do this, but you can rotate it down and then it's a little easier sometimes to unhook them or get them out of the holes. So there, I just reached up and pulled that one out and it should come out fairly easy from the other side as well. So that is, again, the red bow. And the paint is on, in this case, on the passenger side. It's not on the driver's side. So I'll have to remove all of these, get them out of the way. And I want to go over some other things uh, with the installation process before I go forward. Now this is where my approach may be a little different than some others, but it's just an idea. Uh, both ideas will work fine, but I'm just showing you this. I put this piece of tape, and on the inside, this is where your hook would be for a coat hanger. You know, if you're going to hang some clothes back here. So I put a line on the inside, and then I put the tape on the outside, and I, I copied where that line came out, so that I know where that screw hole was for that... Um, hook. Another thing I did up here, this car had the, the stainless retainers, this piece, for the seat belts. I don't know if I'm going to reuse these because I have retractable seat belts now. So I'm going to have to see how this works out. But normally this would be mounted up here. So I did the same thing. I traced two lines and then also measured from the pinch weld up so that I knew that three quarters of an inch, in this case, up, is where these holes for these screws were. Now, you can, if you want, if I showed you there, you can look on the other side, if the, if the camera will pick it up. And it's kind of dark, but anyway, the, there's the two screws there, and then back here, and if it'll, I don't know if it'll get it, but that's where the coat hanger thing went, right? You can see the tape hanging down. Okay. So you can do that, or you can take the screws themselves and put them in the holes before you put the headliner in. 
And what will happen is you turn those screws into the holes, right? Bottom them out, and you put the headliner in place, and then you can feel where that screw is, and then you can take a razor knife and just cut a little X on top. To put the screwdriver in there and unscrew the screw, install your clip. So that may, I may still do that, especially with these hooks in the back. Um, there's also the mount point for the rear, the seat belt for the shoulder harness. So those bolts are easy to find. You can feel those with your fingers. And up front here, I don't have, you know, I have uh, the center point for the visors. The little carrier piece and of course the visors themselves again what you can do is run the screws into those holes bottom them out so they're mostly out of your way and when you're all done you can take a razor take a little X unscrew the screw put your piece on screw it back together and you have your holes uh, up here you have your light and you know same thing you can run your screws in and easy to find them that way uh, I'm just giving you some ideas as to how you can do this. So, at this point, let me show you the headliner. Here's my headliner. It's been laying on my driveway, getting some sun. And the reason for that is it helps get rid of some of the wrinkling from when it was in the box. I'll point out this is a TMI headliner. And I'm going to show you some things about this one in particular that may help you with yours. So when you're doing this, one of the first things you need to do with the headliner is fold it in half. And the reason for that is you need to verify center. Uh, whenever you're putting it in the car, that's very important because you need to have the headliner centered on the window frames. So I have a couple of ideas. One is you can fold it in half and you could take um, something like soap, a soapstone or something, and just kind of mark the the center line on the back side or whatever so you know where it's at. Another idea I had was you could probably take a little bit of fingernail polish and just put a dab on the on the first on the surface uh, where you know you can see it. But what TMI has done, at least I think this is why they've done this, there's a there's actually a notch right there. Already cut into it. So but now I look at it a little more, I see there's actually more notches. But there's one in the middle and then one on either side. So your center notch is going to work for your center point. And that's on the front. Of course, on the back here, this is your sail panel area. And look, same thing here. They put a notch. I hope you can see that. They put a notch right there. So with this headliner, you've already got indications for center. Now, whenever you go to put the bows in, make sure the bows are clean. You know, like no, no material or no uh, burrs or anything like that. So you want to make sure they can slide into this webbing material and not get caught or tear anything up. Along with that, when you put the bows through, you're going to find that this material is going to be too long. What I mean by that is your bow will come out, and we'll show that later, when your bow comes in here, you're going to have to cut back some of this material to help expose part of the bow so that you can use it. But I'll show you that in just a minute. But I'm really happy to find those notches in the headliner, so now I know where center is for sure. So let me show you these hooks. Whenever you push the bow to the rear of the car, it's going to expose that hook. Okay, so you get that one loose. Get the other one loose and the bow rotates down and then you can just when you have it like halfway down you should be able to pull it right out so again that the rear one is blue and then white and red so you leave these up in place you know those are gonna come in play when you go to snap everything back in if you wanted to at this point you could spray some primer or something up here. This is not going to get affected by anything. It's surface rust from 50 years ago. It's not going to hurt it. But if you wanted to, this would be the time to address some of that. Just to show you, I put that screw back in for the hook. 
and I also put the screws in where the visor goes and the screws for the light. Now, make note, these are really long. So only turn them in so far, otherwise you could be poking up into the metal of the roof. So be careful with that. So now I'll show you the bows outside the car. There you can see the blue color, the white color a little better, and the red, and then the forward one has no paint on it at all. Now, I did go over these or with a Scotch-Brite, at least that forward one, just to make sure that it was smooth. The others felt fine. But if you'll notice, this one, it's just round. Nothing different about it, just a round shape. The next one actually has a flat spot all the way across. So the top edge of it is flat. Same way with this one. It is flat all the way across. And then it looks like the aft one, it has a little bit of a flat spot right there. Uh, it, it does go, yep, it's flat all the way across as well. So that's unique. The, the front one is round, and these two are look like they're pretty much the same, even though they're different colors. But still, keep track of that color pattern so you don't mess that up. Another thing I want to show you, I left this piece of whatever material on here to show that it did not go all the way down to the corner. So whether they, you know, I'm sure it didn't rot away, but oh, however they did this at the factory, you know, they had cut it short so that it had some play in it because it's going to, it makes it more difficult to get it in place. So it's like that on both sides where it's just a little bit short. So just to show you that. Okay, so you can probably see all I did was I, I bunched these together so that I have all these pieces, you know, where the strip is on top sticking up. And all you have to do, all you have to do is get these into the correct spaces. So it might take a little bit of manipulating to get them to slide in. But as I as I showed you, you know this um, there, the material runs all the way to the edge. So what you have to do is move it in, slide it around until you get an equal length, let's say, on both sides, so that the rod is centered on the sleeve. That's pretty close. I can probably go with just a hair more. But that was that first one, the bare metal. And I have these laying in order so that I don't mess up, hopefully, right? Not that it matters, but I'm going to turn these around because the color needs to be on the passenger side. That's how they come out. That's how I'm putting them back. <laughs> so I'm going to verify where I'm at material lengthwise from edge to the uh, start of the rod. That should be good. And now what I have to do is expose this because, you know, that other piece that I talked about, this, this piece that was in here, you can see hopefully see that it came all the way up to there so all of this was exposed on this rod all the way up to this point so I'm just doing that because I do have a pretty good reference with that leftover piece so again 
I'm going to cut this. Obviously, don't cut the material. Okay. Now, the rod is exposed on both ends. What I will do on these other ones is I will cut them. I won't go up as far as I did on these. I'll just make it so that the hook is exposed and maybe, I don't know, maybe an inch more something like that you get the idea so I don't know how hard it will be to film actually putting this in place uh, I looked over the TMI instructions and it pointed out you put the last bow in the quarter you know in the back of the car you put that in first and you hook the hooks onto that bow that keeps it from moving fore and aft well from moving forward let's say then you put in the other three and then you start working at the very front of the windshield, very center. That's where you start gluing it. And then you also start gluing out, outboard from there into the corners uh, of the windshield frame. And then you come to the back of the car and you do the same thing in, you work from the center out and you make sure you stretch everything. So I'm going to try to film all that, but I'm just going to work on getting this into the car where it belongs. It also pointed out on the TMI instructions that put these bows in the top holes. When I pointed out, they said that's for taller people, and these were all in the lower holes, so I'm gonna follow their instructions and put them in the top holes. Might gain a little bit of space.